sometimes even death, can have some value. It's not just about the inheritance that the deceased leaves behind, but something new. Of course, the relatives will have to pay a hefty sum for it. One entrepreneur, the owner of a funeral agency, decided to add a new offer to his price list, manufacturing synthetic diamonds from the ashes of the deceased. This service is not new, it exists in many countries. And despite its high cost, there is demand for it. The businessman engaged an institute to develop documentation for installing the new equipment. Since the client had a crematorium, the scientists took the opportunity to conduct their own long-planned research. The task before the research team was to document the process of cremation and publish a scientific article based on it. The client didn't mind providing them with the facility. The scientists brought their equipment to the crematorium and explained the recording process to the staff. A fireproof camera with a motion sensor was installed directly inside the furnace, and as soon as the coffin entered, the recording would start automatically. The recording was coordinated not only with the crematorium owner but also with the deceased's family. People were found in advance who agreed to have their deceased relative become the subject of the research. The entire process was scheduled for the morning and the evening before, after the cremation of the last deceased and once the furnace had cooled down, the scientists installed their camera. Everything was planned in a way that wouldn't disrupt the crematorium's operations. It was envisioned that the entire process would be recorded. The researchers planned to sit at their institute and observe everything remotely. Additionally, a young scientist took the initiative and connected an online stream to his phone. Two individuals were conducting the research, an older scientific staff member diligently carrying out the work, while a young man named Charlie poked his nose everywhere and bombarded the crematorium staff with many questions. They finished late. A security guard arrived and asked in surprise what was happening. We don't get paid much at our institute, so we decided to work here, joked the young scientist. Come on, joking aside, let's go home, urged his colleague. And all three of them went home, including the crematorium employee who had grown tired of Charlie's curiosity and hurriedly left first. The security guard just shrugged his shoulders, wondering what could be interesting here for people to do. It seemed that only Charlie found it fascinating. After all, it was a break from sitting at the institute, a bit of variety in his work. Along the way, the young man spotted a charming cafe, and since they were tired and hungry, he suggested to his colleague that they stop there for a snack. But Charlie was a young man without a family or a girlfriend. And his colleague's wife was waiting at home for dinner and was already insistently calling him. In the end, Charlie went to the cafe alone. However, since he didn't feel comfortable being by himself, he decided to find some company. In the cafe, he spotted an attractive girl and decided to introduce himself, resulting in Charlie's day taking a different turn. He stayed late in the cafe, engaged in conversation with his new pleasant acquaintance. It was closer to midnight when he received a notification on his phone. Charlie remembered that he was not just a guy but a scientist because his phone distracted him with work-related matters. To his surprise, he saw that the camera in the crematorium had started recording. He assumed it must be some mistake, perhaps they had done something wrong, and the sensor had malfunctioned. He wanted to disconnect and hide his phone. After all, it was too late to adjust the camera settings, and nothing serious would happen if the recording continued throughout the night. The battery was supposed to last for 24 hours. But then Charlie noticed that a coffin had entered the furnace. It meant that the sensor had worked as intended. However, Charlie couldn't understand why someone would be cremated at night. They had agreed on everything beforehand, all the staff had gone home, except for the security guard. And now Charlie felt uneasy, he realized that something inexplicable was happening in the crematorium. If there was no plan for cremation, then who was in the coffin now? Something isn't right here, he realized. Is something wrong? The girl became concerned. You look pale. I need to check something, 
Charlie replied, feeling flustered, and with regret, he noted that he had to go to work urgently. The scientist decided to go to the crematorium to find out what was happening and who the unannounced coffin in the furnace belonged to. Luckily, he was nearby at the moment. Charlie didn't rush, on the way, he glanced at his phone screen, pondering the situation. But then he saw something strange, it seemed to him that the coffin was slightly jumping, as if someone inside was trying to escape. And soon, the fire would ignite, and if there was a living person inside, they would burn alive. Charlie wasn't sure if it was just his imagination. The coffin might be moving for some other reason. He didn't know all the details of cremating deceased individuals. That was precisely what they were planning to investigate during their research. Nevertheless, just in case, he picked up his pace. The fact that everything was happening at night indicated that there might indeed be a living person in the coffin. In such a situation, nothing could be ruled out. His vivid young imagination pushed Charlie further towards the idea of rescuing someone. Now the young man was running towards the crematorium, but as he approached, he saw a large SUV parked by the building, with two burly guys smoking nearby. Charlie abruptly stopped and hid behind a tree. It seems better for me not to get involved there, otherwise, I might find trouble himself, Charlie thought. However, he was still worried about what was happening in the furnace. What if someone's life depended on his reaction? While the scientist contemplated what to do next, a recording was being broadcasted on his phone screen. And to his horror, he saw that the lid of the coffin had broken, and a hand was sticking out from inside. There was no time for further reflection, action was needed. Charlie put his phone in his pocket and cautiously approached the building, staying low to the ground. Fortunately, the burly men were engrossed in their conversation and didn't notice him. Eventually, he managed to enter the premises unnoticed. Inside the crematorium, Charlie saw the security guard. Initially, he thought that the guard might be in danger. But now he realized that it was the opposite, the guard was involved in what was happening. The man was busy near the furnace and was ready to press a button. The scientist acted swiftly, he lunged towards the guard and struck him forcefully on the head. He couldn't allow him to scream. Noise was not an option, everything had to be done as quietly as possible. Otherwise, the men outside would come running, and Charlie would definitely not be able to handle them along with the two burly guys. The guy managed to disable the guard without any problems. It was unfortunate for the guard that Charlie was not only a scientific researcher but also an athlete. He had a hobby of practicing Eastern martial arts. With one almost professional strike, he took down the fairly large man and hurried towards the furnace. Fortunately, Charlie's curiosity came in handy this time. And it was in vain that the crematorium employee got irritated when the young scientist asked him questions while installing the camera. After all, now it helped Charlie quickly orient himself in the situation. It was not for nothing that he inquired about how the furnace works, how to turn it on and off, if there are any malfunctions, and if it's possible to extract a coffin if necessary. The employee reluctantly provided him with all this information, thinking that the scientist would never need it. Now, however, Charlie had to thank him for his patience because he managed to quickly remove the coffin with a living person from the furnace. Quiet, quiet, Charlie immediately began to whisper. Don't make any noise, or they'll kill us. He helped the elderly man out of the coffin and immediately warned him that they were still in danger. How did you end up here? The guy asked. How? Scammers. The man whispered anxiously. I woke up in the coffin and realized I had to get out. Despite his advanced age, the rescued man turned out to be strong. He managed to break through the flimsy boards. He didn't even realize how close he was to losing his life. Now, seeing where the young man had pulled him from, he was in shock. Meanwhile, the guard began to regain consciousness. Charlie explained to the saved man that it was too early to celebrate as there were two burly guys outside, possibly armed. 
The fight for their lives was not over yet. The man looked around and noticed another room where they could hide. He suggested burning the empty coffin and knocking out the guard once again, laying him on the bench. Let the accomplices think he had dozed off. They followed through with the plan, hiding themselves, and Charlie sent a message to his friend, explaining their predicament and asking him to call the police. That way, they managed to buy some time. Soon, the burly men returned from their break and discovered the sleeping guard. Hey, worker. One of the guys nudged him. He just wriggled around. Fortunately, the criminals didn't suspect anything. Then they peered into the furnace, and the coffin was engulfed in flames. Taking a while today, one of the burly men glanced at his watch. We got ourselves a big old man. The other one laughed. Apparently, they needed to wait until their victim burned completely because they showed no intention of leaving. But while they waited for their victim to be consumed by the fire, unexpected visitors arrived at the crematorium. The criminals received an unpleasant surprise, before they could comprehend what was happening, they were apprehended by the police. But the burly men were even more astonished when a living corpse, who they believed was burning in the furnace, walked out towards them. As a result, the scientists, in addition to conducting their research, unexpectedly helped expose a criminal group involved in apartment extortion. But what pleased them even more was that they managed to save a person. And scrupulous real estate agents resort to all kinds of methods to enrich themselves. These criminal scheme was not much different from others, but they chose to dispose of their unwanted victims in the crematorium. They targeted lonely individuals or those facing family problems. They promised to pay them, but they paid nothing and simply seized the properties. They forced their victims to sign documents and promptly disposed of them. One member of this group intentionally became a guard at the crematorium for convenience in eliminating the victims. They conducted their dark deeds at night, bringing actual corpses closer to noon. By that time, the furnace would have cooled down, and no one would suspect that something had happened. They didn't get rid of people every day, and their electricity consumption went unnoticed. They had been operating according to this scheme for over a year. Since the furnace only worked with a coffin, another competitor from a funeral agency was also involved in the operation, supplying them with coffins. The criminal organization turned out to be quite extensive. Fortunately, the guard wasn't informed about the scientist's research, and his accomplices, oblivious to everything, brought the next victim. The criminals usually administered a strong sedative to their victims before taking them to the crematorium. It is said that they burned people while they were unconscious, so they wouldn't feel anything, it all happened quickly. However, this time, the elderly man they were trying to dispose of proved to be resilient. The sedative didn't affect him, and he woke up in the coffin. He found himself in the right moment when the scientists were conducting their research, and that's how he survived. The criminal scheme was exposed, and the perpetrators ended up behind bars. The director of the crematorium was shocked by what had been happening under his nose. The investigation would determine how many living people they had burned. He decided to enhance security, install cameras, and not rely solely on the guard. As for what happened next with the diamonds, it remains unclear. He put that on hold for now. Who knows, there might be other entrepreneurs in the future who will come up with the idea of turning living people into precious gemstones. There are many cunning individuals out there, not only extorting apartments but also enriching themselves with diamonds. Meanwhile, the scientists carried out their research. Only they know the results it yielded and the benefits it will bring to society.